I'm going to invite Team One up, and we shall all welcome them and say. <laughs> She has an online class that is a social media course for students to basically establish a social media campaign for a fake business. Currently, her major problem in the course is retention, right? Her drop failure and withdrawal rate is very high. So she is interested in implementing group dynamics to see if that will help with her retention. So what she's going to do is to have them be put in groups and she's going to be using icebreaker techniques online to have them get to know each other and using the groups that no longer bomb, right? The groups that are the bomb techniques. Um, they're going to be creating a fake business together in order to come up with um, a social media campaign using various platforms. In order to talk with each other, they're going to be using voice threads and um, basically implementing a bunch of other techniques Mike. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Um, 
to be able to put this together and then she's going to be running some statistics to figure out whether the uh, DFW rate decreased. Perfect. Hi everybody. Y'all are tired. Stand up. Stand up. And she has a problem with her students not retaining literature terminology and not necessarily um, remembering all the historical events and dates that affect the context of when the literature was created. And of course, that's a very important part of understanding why literature is, you know, if you put it into the context, it's much more meaningful than just a poem floating about in space. So to increase her students' ability to retain these terms and historical events and times, she is going to use um, a few different methods, but one of the main ones she's going to use is each one, teach one, and then toward the end of the semester, she will be giving out crosser puzzles and quizzes to see if it helped them, if it helped their retention. So yesterday, she taught me something, and I'm going to teach one of you. So I need a volunteer. Mm, great. So yesterday, she taught me about the term I always say it wrong, primogenture. Do you know what that means? I don't. Great. So primogenture. <laughs> Primogenture is the practice of, of the wealth, it, it, it's only the noble class, um, when the wealth of the noble class, when the, when the father dies, he passes all this wealth to the eldest son. Okay, so you probably all know this happens. But the problem with that is what happens to sons number two, three, four, five? They don't have um, an income, they don't have land, they don't have anything, so they, how are they to be desirable for like future wives and things like that? And, and they, they don't have an occupation. So what happens with young men who don't have an occupation, don't have an income, don't have a, a direction to go in life, it can become a little problematic. So the Pope recognized this problem, and so to give them industry, basically, he kicked off the Crusades. So they went off to work for the Crusades, and some of them died, which partially solved the problem. <laughs> Some of them came back as heroes, which partially solved the problem. So now they came back, and, and they were being recognized for being heroic, and they're now desirable, and they can have wives, and start the process all over again. All right. Go teach someone else. <laughs> I, I say primogenture, it's actually primogenture, yeah. Which refers to kicking off of the Crusades, or no? It refers to giving the wealth, the, the passing of wealth to okay. the eldest son. Got it. Right. Great, thank you. Yeah, okay. Karen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Turn Karen. She said, "Turn doctor." Up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we seem to have started a thing here. All right, so um, <laughs> this is Jeff. <laughs> Um, and he has been, he's actually already been working on a gradual redesign of his Comp 1301 course using Blackboard and the Open Education Resources grant. Um, and so he's looking at expanding upon that a bit. Um, he's working on partially flipping the course. And to support that objective, he's going to bring in some of the active teaching stuff, including preview quizzes um, to get them more involved, as well as peer teaching activities so that they can take the stuff that they studied outside of class and put it into application with, once they get there. Um, he's also going to start working in regular quarterly assessment using Blackboard, using um, activity specific assessment, et cetera, to ensure that it's working. But one of the big things he's got to do, because there is still a fair amount of lecture, because you know, we're teachers and we like the sound of our own voices, um, is he's going to start inserting pause procedure and pair checks into this, um, which will ensure that even his more traditional teaching methods hopefully become a little bit better in terms of <coughs> comprehension and retention. Very well. All right. Thank you. I don't need a mic. Uh, <laughs> this is Sherry uh, in the green. Sherry is a professor of anthropology. Um, she teaches both online and traditional lecture courses. Sherry's very interested in moving away from the old chalk and talk kind of method of lecture and incorporating more um, interactive, active, and intentional learning techniques wherein she will sort of deploy these but also explain to her students 
why she's doing them and what, what the, the purpose of those uh, techniques are. She's going to start with using the playing card method to divide up her students into groups of three. Those uh, triad groups will then uh, engage in the pause procedure during sort of the more traditional lecture days. They will get together in their groups of three, review notes, ask questions and whatnot. The I Sherry's idea is that these triad groups will ultimately sort of morph into larger groups uh, sort of organically as they work with each other more. Uh, she plans on changing this up monthly and perhaps uh, organizing the larger study groups and perhaps even webinar groups online. Uh, we mentioned the pause procedure she wants to use and she also wants to explore various technologies to try to get student feedback assessment sort of spontaneously and instantly on the screen. And one of the techniques and technologies she and that's our cue for quiz time. Okay. Everyone has a Flickr.com card. You have several of them on your table. Not everyone has one. Go ahead and grab one so, of those. Um, I'm going to put up a few questions related to what they just presented. And on each pattern, there are letters A, B, C, and D. If you think choice A is the correct answer, hold the card up with A facing up. Oh, I got you. Oh, okay. Oh. And so, whenever you're ready, you can hold it up and I'm going to scan the card. So, the first question is about Azura's pilot. Pterodactyl, Zora. Which one? Which one? Which one? Which you don't have to get close. Yeah. Just have to decide. I'm going to change it. Okay. 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 So I think that there is a little dark, so it's not capturing it. So you can see how it populates. Oh, yeah. It populates to take his feedback. She's behind her. So you got to um, reduce the screen size. <laughs> all So 53% of the class got chose um, choice B. And uh, the correct answer, you can show the class. about Jeff's pilot, can you see that? Yeah. Lecture. So whenever you're ready. Lecture <laughs> <laughs> <D>. <laughs> Okay. So um, all you need. This is 
free. You all you need is a Flickr's app that you download. It's free, and you need these cards. You just photocopy them on cardstock. Only thing, do not laminate them because of the glare. It won't scan. And even if the student walks away with one of the cards, you can have a backup and put it back in there. You can even do group activities with this because you can assign a group just like we are doing it. Uh, one card per group and you know, get, collect a lot of feedback. So the students love it. You guys should try it in class. I think you'll enjoy it as well. Take a moment, 
and pause oh. in your lecture. Oh. Research dating back as far as the 70s so students can't focus for more than 15 or 20 minutes or so. So break your lecture into those chunks, take a couple of minutes between those chunks and let students talk to each other. You can also use that time for more engaged activities like um, note comparison, like um, summarizing key points, um, and then at the end of the session, have them summarize again. You can either let them keep the summaries or you can take them up and assess what you should review the next period and what you should change in future semesters. So I don't talk more, I talk less. You talk less, <laughs> you give the students time and those pauses also give you more time to use that post <laughs> These guys really know what they're Man, talking they're about. Man, they're all over it. <laughs> <laughs> Benny, I've got some students who read before they come to class and their discussions are so bright. And then I have some who are slackers and they just they just don't have it together. How do I get them all on the same page? Poor oh, Catherine. Poor us looking behind. You missed the whole week. Should I be there when Julia and Mary they were telling us what to do? Let me look into this. Uh, <laughs> you flip the classroom. <laughs> so you give an exam before the class. Just a little quiz, and they have to make sure they study. But if they don't study, that's okay. They'll get zero. <laughs> <laughs> then when they get into the classroom, they put them in groups. Then these people in the group who have read before, they will teach the other students, and then they will pick up the. So we will have to. You have to waste your time going around teaching everybody. They will teach themselves. So the next time you give a quiz before the class. Those that look like dummy when they were in groups will <laughs> continue to study very hard so that your the problem will be resolved. Just flip the classroom. <laughs> Jill, <coughs> my students, no matter what I do, they just see, they want to sit in the same groups all together with their friends. You know, I'm trying to break them up, but they just keep sitting with their friends and they get these little clicks all over the place. And, I want to break that out. What do I do? How do I get? How do I get them out of their, their little molds and their clicks? Well, Russ, clicks. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get them forming, storming, norming, and performing. First, you want to break them up into new groups, forming new connections with new people. You want to facilitate them through the conflict of that storming phase and to create a new norm that will get them performing at the level you want. That ought to nail them. <laughs> Chris, I've got some students who I really want to get them to participate and they're so shy and they won't say anything. And then the other ones, it's like the same five people are talking all the time. How can I get them all involved? I know. Use the jigsaw technique. <laughs> the jigsaw classroom is a cooperative learning technique in which all your students participate. And it's going to promote better learning, improve student motivation. It also increases enjoyment of the learning experience. And it's really simple to use. First, you just want to divide your students into maybe four to six jigsaw groups. And ideally, you want your groups to be diverse in terms of race and gender and ethnicity, ability. And next, you appoint one student to be the group leader. And you will have already divided your lesson into four to six different segments. And then you assign each student to learn about one segment. And then you give student time to read over their segment and become familiar with it. Next, you're going to form temporary expert groups by having one student from each jigsaw group get with the other students that were assigned that same segment. So they really become experts in that particular part. And then you bring the students back into their jigsaw group 
and ask each student to present his or her segment to the group. Now you want to encourage them to ask each other questions or for clarification. And you're going to float around from group, group to group and help them if they're having any troubles. So that's your role, kind of helping them out in this process. And at the end of the session, you may want to give a quiz on the material. And with this technique, it's great because each student is essential to this process. And that's what makes this technique so effective. Christine, I don't know about you, but I can almost see my dream becoming like a destiny. <laughs> what a beautiful <laughs> There's only one thing. Rosa, I think you can help me. Some of my students <laughs> Some of my students are really enthusiastic. They want to be there. I mean there's this energy. Others are just kind of like whatever. How do, how do I get a contagious energy going in the classroom? Well, let me think that I think you would be, uh, you need to be working in developing, uh, <laughs> living and learning laboratory to work together with the students, creating knowledge and sharing the knowledge, that kind of knowledge that can resolve the problems of uh, this world. So, and meanwhile, you are creating the skills that will help them to face this uh, uh, complexity <coughs> of today's world. Would you like something like that? I would. That would be that would be my destiny. That would be my destiny. <laughs> well, I think that I have some new tool. I can tell you, this has been developing for years. But I think it's the time that you use high-tech technology, yes. application, and tools. On my and phone? I have something. I will show you. <laughs> 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 it's just come out with me, and I will share with you. Are you prepared? Uh, I'm getting there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Well, this is the new high-tech tool, voice track. We all want to have <laughs> all sharing every place where you want to be in the next decade. <laughs> where, where did you guys learn all of this? Well, from here. <laughs> and engaged learning seminar. Yeah. At the beginning of this week, we all came here with things that we wanted to improve in our classroom. And thanks to the ACC, the, the Project ACC Summer Institute, <laughs> we can raise our classes to a higher, higher level. level.
so we wanted to um, we wanted to do something that was fun because we were feeling a little saturated and um, we wanted to do something interactive rather than just demonstrate for you we wanted to get you involved in the way that we hope to get our students involved we also wanted to develop something that was goal oriented uh, to give us a sense of purpose for this activity and we also wanted to um, engage you in practicing strategies maybe from the student perspective so it's always nice after you've built out something to see it from the student view and to kind of think through how would my students experience this uh, to tell you about how we developed as a group, um, we left yesterday without really a clear idea of what we're going to do today. <laughs> that felt kind of frightening for me, I don't know about the rest of you. Um, but we got together in email and emailed back and forth and this morning came with a plan and then we're able to just tweak it and refine it a little bit. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to Amy and David to talk about the goals for this activity and to give you some guidance. Okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, so the goal is to find activities for out-of-town guests uh, visiting Austin, and the, these are the various topics. I don't need to go over them; you can read them. But but the uh, the uh, what we're going to do here is use various uh, techniques that we picked up through the week to solve these problems in individual groups. And the process is okay. So um, this is a partial jigsaw. So due to our limited time restrictions, um, you're in your expert group, and that's where you're going to stay. So uh, we're going to take advantage of the fact that you have already formed, stormed, normed, etc. So hopefully you already have some good group processes going. Um, so my lovely assistants are going to hand out your instruction cards. Each group is going to get a topic. Um, so, your guests are coming next week. You really, you really need to start getting your plan together. Um, so, each group is going to be responsible for one piece of the puzzle. Are you deciding the best art, arts activity for them? Are you deciding the best um, short day trip? So, you'll get your group topic, and then you're going to use the technique that we're giving you in order to brainstorm a solution. So, we're assuming, this is a, this is a big assumption, that each group probably had, had people attending each of the sessions. So somebody in your group has probably been exposed to the topics that we're asking you to use, or the techniques that we're asking you to use. So um, if you don't know what a particular technique is, we're asking you to rely on your group's knowledge. Um, and, if we, and if we need to come and step in and give you more guidance, we will, because we'll be circulating throughout the process. So I'm going to have my assistants, they're going to hand out your You can put your tabletops up so we can see which one you're on. Team 7, you're going to be number 3. Worksheet. So here it is. Thank you. And you'll flip over your topic so they can Flip over the topic. So you have about 7 minutes to generate one idea for your, for your topic, and then we'll come back together and see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, we have four ideas. Let's go. Okay. Hello, I'm Michelle. 
from the United States of America. They will share the one million dollar prize. I invite the panel of outstanding educators from ACC to share the success of the teaching experiments they completed last year in the field of active learning. Nobel Prize winner, Dr. Jody Denison. I'm, I'm honored. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, can you advance the slide, please? So, this is what I felt like before I started using active teaching techniques. Um, and now that I'm using them, I feel 39 again. So, what I did in my classroom during spring 2018. Um, is I started using the pause procedure, that is my cat pause. <laughs> um, and I also let my students pick their own partner, and I, I did like to live dangerously like Austin Powers. So I did the pause procedure, which is, we covered it a little bit today, but what I did was I had students pair up, they chose their partner, I lectured for 15 minutes while students took notes, I gave them two minutes to reflect, compare notes, ask each other questions. I repeated this several times, I repeat. Um, it was difficult not to answer their questions during the pause procedure. I think that was my biggest challenge, but questions remained at the end and a lot of times they answered their own questions throughout, so that was helpful. And it increased retention in my classes, um, more students showed up each week. They were on time more often, which I loved. They expressed having a deeper understanding of the concepts and had better application of the concepts. And grades didn't increase on exams, which was surprising, but they had more robust essay question answers. Um, and the, after the class concluded, they saw me as their allies, so they kept talking to me after that, and they started taking classes together. So they bonded. Wow. Yeah.
answer their study question, which was then going to be a test question, although they didn't know that at the time, um, when things came around. By um, putting these into place, I got a big payoff in terms of my two goals, which were increased attendance and increased student um, engagement. Attendance went up 75%. Wow. Engagement went up 50%. However, grades did drop slightly as students had to practice their new note-taking skill, and it took a while to, uh, to perfect. However, students told me that they enjoyed the class, um, felt more connected to the class, and also learned to take better notes through this process. So Christina, what I heard you say was that you implemented the guided notes and that you um, had a number of goals, mostly student attendance, student satisfaction, that they take better notes, that they make better grades, of course, and that was accomplished, although student attendance initially dropped and grades weren't necessarily the best at first until they got the hang of it. Um, I also noted that you said you had already the notes on Blackboard, and so those notes were easily converted to just removing key words or phrases so that you could turn those into guided notes. Um, and that students struggled with note taking initially, but then after they got the hang of it, they, they were able to um, keep up with notes and learn how to take better notes and use a system of props as well so that they could understand the uh, need to fill in the key blanks. Is that about what you said? About what I said. Great, thanks. Um, so I used, a, my name is Lynn Wiesman and I'm an interpreter educator and one of the tools that we use to educate interpreters is called the discourse mapping process. So I modified the speak right activity and as Christina was speaking I was uh, drawing notes out so that I could reproduce her uh, talk and so students who do a cumulative paper in every one of my classes are now expected to also discourse map. So it serves two functions, that they're able to apply the discourse mapping process and they can reproduce that from what is not a static text, which is what we usually do during the practice sessions. So they're able to then reproduce it from extemporaneous speeches or talks and that way they're applying it across the curriculum. Great. <laughs> My name is Cecilia, and as you heard, with us implementing the uh, active learning and pause procedures, it has shown an increase in our class attendance, and it has also showed an increase in some of the students' grades. It has shown a huge change in the class climate, and there is more interaction between the students. They are more engaged with each other. They have even formed study groups outside of class. Also Im implemented was the students generated test questions, which the, we do monitor the content of the question for saying that what we teach in class and make sure the material is being covered. It shows that the kids, the students, really like seeing their work on a graded paper. The other thing we have implemented also is a weekly assessment where we find out if we are covering all the material that the students have read in the chapter. And that has helped us great with improving our attendance plus the grades, the students show better grades. Thank you. Hello, my name is Karen Bolton and I teach in the art department. In the spring of 2018, I implemented active and engaged learning strategies in my Design One class. Um, I chose the Each One Teach One method this was by far my best semester yet. Uh, from the first day, I started off right and I got them in pairs. The um, strategy that I used for uh, going over the uh, core concepts of the class after going over the syllabus, I decided to lecture on the elements and principles of art and design, such as line, shape, balance, focal point. Uh, then I assigned each pair one specific dimension. Uh, they broke off into their uh, pairs and they spent about half the uh, class reviewing catalogs and magazines from uh, museums and different art publications. Um, they were looking for good and bad examples of their uh, assigned content. And after this, 
they stood in front of the class and they taught the fundamentals that they had discovered. So basically on the first day of class, this project allowed each of the students in the room to have um, a review of the actual course content. Um, and they had a deeper awareness of the elements and principles of art and design. This set the tone for the entire semester. Uh, the individual projects that followed, the students were more engaged with one another. Uh, they were more open to exchanging ideas with one another and they had a greater understanding of the course content. Uh, this was my most creative and rewarding class uh, teaching at ACC thanks to Project ACC. My name is Allie Salzman and I teach British literature for ACC. Um, I used to have trouble getting students to relate to the text in early British literature, um, but this past semester I emphasized teamwork and community in my classroom through the use of home groups. Um, I implemented project-based learning and uh, they all completed three main projects together and worked together in some way for most of the classes and were able to engage the material and each other better than I've ever seen in any of my classes. Um, and here, you wanna put this one here? So, I did a uh, e evaluation graffiti poster when the course started, and I got responses such as, oh, my question was, what do you think of when you think of British literature? And they answered, poor, she sucks. My dog's name is Shakespeare, and Shakespeare spelled incorrectly three times. Um, can't I just watch the movie? How does this relate to my future? Why? Cliff Notes rule. Um, roses, old white dudes, roses are red, violets are blue. This class is required. Okay. So then, I did a graffiti um, response at the end of the semester and I got very different responses. I want to be BFFs with Mary Queen of Scots. Um, Samuel Taylor Coleridge is the man. Uh, I related this to my own life. I love Brit Lit, etc. So I really related and even a Shakespeare quote that the student could remember. Wow. We know what we are, but know not what we may be. Shakespeare spelled correctly. <laughs> <laughs> so, the proof is in the evidence uh, that the students got much more out of the course than they had gotten out previously, um, and what, than what they had when they expected coming in. Um, and on behalf of my team, I'd like to announce that we're donating the million dollars to ACC. <laughs> Active learning at the college um, and for chocolate and breakfast. And breakfast, and breakfast. breakfast. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. They're all the time looking at the computer. Yeah. 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 
I want to try this uh, immediate exam feedback, but I can't get around in the room, and there's no place to really group together. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've actually I tried a few active learning, and I just stopped, like because you know I was tripping over stuff. I couldn't get to the group. Saw you do it. Oh my god! It happens all the time. Yeah. There's lo these long tables, you know, and you can't even like fit in between them. The poor kids can't even fit in between them, you know. And I'm always shouting over there. So I don't do any active learning. I try to talk as much as I can. But if they ask a question, it's all downhill. You know, they're just trying to hear what they're saying. I know. You can't even get to them. And the really quiet ones just can't talk loud enough. Yeah. Do you have these same problems? Sometimes, yeah. It just it's and, and vocally, you know, I can't get out to them. They don't seem to hear me. And, I don't know, my in focus doesn't focus. <laughs> All right, and, and like I use a lot of group work, and I'm constantly being told by other teachers, you're too loud. Your class is having too much fun. Can you quiet down? And just trying to get the students into groups, especially at Highland, where we were told, do not, under any circumstances, move these desks. So I can't get yeah, to my yeah. groups once I get them formed. Yeah, really and if we try to get in a circle, it takes half of the class time. Yeah. What, what, so what, yeah. what, was, the, yeah. what was the meeting for? Oh, I, forgot. I remember. <laughs> we got that million dollar donation from those <laughs> teachers. <laughs> So we're going to redesign the new canvas and we're like uh, is there an architect who's coming to meet with us? We need help. Howdy. 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 All right, so um, I'm going to have to come. I'm the, the architect. Uh, I'm assuming you just want desks, uh, a chalkboard, and maybe one of those? No, 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 no
I just noticed there are other people in the room. <laughs> so a big, big department. So other it is a big department. So other people, you'll notice that you have an exit ticket in front of you. And what we'd like you to put on your exit ticket, since I'm really just sort of bowled over by what you're telling me, um, tell me what you need. I have, you know, I am just close to what Carl will Cook. make your students. We have one thought. Is we have these tables that look like this, if you have tables, or the individual little chairs that you can't sit in very well. What about if we had tables that look kind of like this, so you could put them together uh, and make combinations easier, oh. they wouldn't be so far apart, or you could string them out like this. Uh, you could even put right, those now, in a circle. I'm not an architect. Don't put them in an architect. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now we've got this. Does anybody want to give me one more? Uh, do we see lighting? Lighting. lighting. Soundproofing. Yeah. Now, what, what do you mean about lighting? What, you don't well, like the rooms are well lit, yeah. Fluorescent lights is a problem. Um, you can't see the screen sometimes because the lights either all on or all off. And what so, about the people who are facing to the side or with their back to work in groups? Why can't we have multiple ways to view one computer? Like ideally something that doesn't have to be projected through a light. So rather than what else? Multiple display. So why not, why not whiteboard? Whiteboards all the way around, yeah. and in the corners uh, have the screen. I, I agree. I would like multiple whiteboards as well. Well, then you could put this on. screen uh, projector in the center, which actually points in the direction that you need it to go. And, uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Moving. Well, in that other room we were in, they had multiple screens, so you had multiple options yeah, right. of where to look. Yeah. So if I'm facing this way and I need to look on this projector, I have to turn around. But if it's back in the corner, I can look back there comfortably. Mm -hmm. Air conditioning control. Oh, yes, yes. yes. please. Yes. Yes. I can die all the week. I'm sweating out your ass. Jennifer, what were you going to say? AC control. Um, so I have to like carry all these like mini whiteboards with me and fancy markers and expos. If I want to do this type of stuff, I have to actually carry it around with me. Um, so it would be nice if there was like an active learning closet in these you know active learning classrooms that had mini whiteboards, expos, nice sharpie markers, color paper, paper clips, you know, anything that you would need. Clickers, clickers, clickers. Yeah. Or one of those computer carts where you could, if you yes. want to use computers, you can hand out the laptops and you could put them away when they're not uh, yeah. being used. Yes, in the high school they call them cows. Yes, cows. Cows. Yeah. cows. cows. Uh, yeah. That's a bunch of bull. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, settle down, settle down. The ability to raise um, desks or tables up to standing. Oh, that's oh, true. Yes. Yes. Out of your chair is less likely to now, see. Now, I was the architect for HLC, so I know that some of those uh, move around. Now, do you like the tables at HLC? or? No, oh, we are too happy to move. Yeah. We would like yeah. equity across yeah. all campuses, right? Yeah. So if they have movable tables, we yeah. should have them in South Austin, and you should also have them at yeah. At the least grand. we'd like to have a few of these, of these all. That's yeah. right. At every campus. We want them all. We want it all. We want it all. We want it all. We want it all. I can go to cook. Yeah. I'm like this. <laughs> Two fingers right now. Okay. You're the educators. I, I, I should have come and asked you a long time ago. But you got to tell me how this improves the quality of, uh, of what they receive. I can't just go to cook and say, they want cool whiteboards. What? Give me some. Give me some thoughts. As what, to if, what if we had everybody take a few minutes and use those exit tickets to write down or even draw? If you're a more visual, artistic person, you could draw your ideal all, and we'll take them from you. Give them to our architect who will take them to our 
administration. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Tell yeah. me, remember, tell me why this helps the learning. Yeah. All right. Because you know, students one thing are engaged in that. It's just team teaching. I really yeah. want to get my students to start teaching okay. as well, rather than being in a lecture format. So what I like to look at is those three levels of team teaching. Uh -huh. To start out, maybe pair share, where they can start to feel more comfortable. Uh, and then moving to gallery walk, where they can get up move around the room and share concepts. And then ultimately, teach themselves. It would certainly be wonderful if they had all those all right, that's, uh, abilities that's what I need. to do that. Right. That's what I need. I right. need what you want and how it will help students. I will take that forward. All right. And yes. level three, they can, they can certainly do group presentation. They can certainly do uh, individual presentation and sometimes even make video to make concepts much clearer. So we have three minutes left. We're going to give you those three minutes to finish your exit tickets, we will take those from you. All right, three minutes, finish your exit tickets. We're gonna end our presentation here. All right.
My name is Suzanne Summers and I teach History 1301, which is a gateway course with a high DFW rate. And I think it's a one of the classes where many of us lecture. And so perhaps you can have this experience in your classroom. So you guys, today what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the Washington administration. And we're going to talk about Alexander Hamilton's proposals and plan to create a more diverse economy. So <laughs> three components, and I want to talk about each of these very briefly. So part one was blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Part two was blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and finally Hamilton proposed part three. So, are there any questions? <laughs> are you guys awake? <laughs> <laughs> what was the second one again? <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, there are several challenges this classroom faces for both the students and the professor. You may recognize some of these challenges, but let's take a look in at the next day. All right, so you guys, what we were, we were talking um, Tuesday, we were talking about some of the challenges faced by the Washington administration in our early history. So, we're going to change things up a little bit today, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend 15 or 20 minutes talking about some of the material that you, that you guys hopefully have read about in class. And then what I'm going to do is give you a couple of minutes to break up into groups of three and share with each other what you've learned, and then we'll come talk about it. So, if you remember, we were... Out of chapter three, we were talking about the J tree. <laughs> Fast forward. So, what I want you guys to do is I want you to spend about two minutes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so the first point was blah, blah, blah. <laughs> 
for some collaboration outside of class. Thank you. And y'all, challenge that you saw? Oh. We were that badly behaved. <laughs> oh, we were we were channeling Damaris. <laughs> okay. Well, then we what did you about see the there? Environment and how how it was like cold or hot and it can be very distracting. Oh. So we wanted to <laughs> figure out. Well, that's really what we're <laughs> you were you were still you were still with the all team. Right? You were in an all classroom. All right, that's all right. Thank you for that. How about y'all back here? Lack of interest. Lack of interest. Yes. Despite Patty's best efforts, there was a, there was a, a, a like pulling teeth. And this team here, challenge? Uh, well, they definitely had some outside yeah. challenges, as, as Jackie was mentioning. Absolutely. These are distractions that are, you know, affecting their ability to come into the classroom and learn. And be on time, yeah. missing right. material, absolutely outside influence. How about you all? Um, um, a challenge? Challenges. Yeah. Challenges. Um, I thought maybe, you know, her head was just a little heavy for the rest of her body. <laughs> <laughs> it was emotional. Yeah. I think I had, it was. I had, I had that challenge myself. That's not the way you are. Right? I'm sorry. Uh, a lack of buy-in. So, like, the film, like, goes to the student who I saw blanks and wasn't sure what to do with it. So, yeah. lack right, of buy-in. Right. Excellent. Yeah. And, Last but definitely don't see some challenges up here. Well, you know, in this group, like there was one person taking notes, but what if the whole group wasn't taking notes? Mm -hmm. so, oh, yeah. yeah. And also the teacher uh, on the first performance was staying up at the board and sort of not engaging all the second time. She came and engaged. Absolutely. I couldn't yeah. see that because I, I couldn't physically. <laughs> <laughs> much, much more immediate, right? That's that immediacy. Okay, excellent contributions, everybody. Um, and we have two minutes left. What techniques did you see used and or what could have been used to mitigate these challenges or wipe them wipe them away? And was it Karen who mentioned the guided notes? Mm -hmm. <coughs> We, we weren't sure if that was intentional. Yeah. We heard yeah. Damaris mention it. And, but maybe with some more explicit right. instruction yeah. and so demonstration so, so that she she's not, land. I don't know what this right. is. There's blanks right. everywhere. Yes, ma'am. I'll, I'll see you, Jeff, just above it. They got into note-taking teams, but they didn't know in advance that they were going to be in note-taking teams. So if she'd give them a heads up, like in 10 minutes, you're going to have to compare notes then yeah. maybe they would not wind up surprised that they had nothing mm -hmm. right yeah we did start to see peer accountability though yes and a bit there yeah. at the end yes. yeah because they're much more embarrassed oftentimes about letting their classmates down than they are letting uh, their professor down absolutely jeff yeah. and then i'll come to you patty was the note taker but also kind of the group leader and i wonder well maybe she's good at taking notes but didn't want to be a group leader so maybe the dynamic could be well we have a good note taker but maybe someone who didn't take notes well could step up and organize the group a so bit she more. didn't have a dual role a dual role right and, and more resentment building up i'm doing everything right, right. excellent and the last one we have just oh, well i just uh, i call this public shaming but meredith <coughs> corrected me that it's not called public shaming <laughs> Pure accountability. And Patty was very positive in her accountability, right? Right. Um, did you bring your notebook? Or I see you have your phone. Do you <laughs> maybe we could yeah. use that? Right. Yeah. So if and teaching our students those types of yeah. ways um, can help avoid I, I teach high school students and teach English and can avoid some of those you know hurt feelings or lashing out if we demonstrate for them.
fabulous things and getting to know each other um, and real quickly we're just gonna say what we plan to do with all of this great information that we've learned this week um, I am planning to um, introduce two stage exams and if at cards in my intro to veterinary technology class um, it's one of my hardest classes it has a lot of information and I'm gonna all those questions that I threw out last year from the fall before are gonna come back and be part of a group exam the, those challenging pieces so it's me. Okay, and I, I teach chemistry, and I'm actually hoping to use a couple of techniques in the fall for my lecture class, which is kind of why I was here. But it occurred to me that I have a lab this summer, and we always have this lab assignment where they have to go to the library. Well, we've been doing it for over 30 years. <laughs> it's, it's really not very active. It's not, it's very solitary, and the papers are kind of awful. Awesome. Uh, she's from the library. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to change it up if we get permissions for it um, to where it's more of a, a group effort. It's kind of like a journalist club. So the end result will be a panel presentation paper where, where they're in groups and they're going to do peer evaluations on their work within the um, within each group before they do the panels and then each panel will be in, evaluated by their peers as well and um, that also will have them um, have some time to uh, develop different techniques for the research during the semester so it's not all crammed into one session and, and I, I think the, the biggest challenge at the beginning is going to be getting them to narrow their question or the thing they want to learn something more about small enough so that they can because you can end up being totally overwhelmed thank you so much I'm Tolan I am uh, I came in looking for something to make the online class more dynamic which is a consistent problem discussion boards don't really go well for me as I've tried different things and they haven't worked well but one thing I haven't tried is voice thread so I'm really excited about integrating that I think the shall I say narcissism of some young folks might make uh, the videotaping themselves fun but I think also it's just more personable you feel more accountable when you're looking people in the eye even if it's over um, something like that so I'm looking forward to that but I'm also really thrilled to say that just this morning because I'll be piloting um, this summer or uh, doing a focus group with my online class now to try out voice thread but I also decided just this morning because I hadn't seen the clickers in action and so I've registered for the site over there and I'm going to use it in my lecture class which is an intro section the online is American minorities so lots of good discussion stuff right um, but in the players class I'll be using that uh, new piece um, to just again check in with uh, note taking and what everyone's learning what they're picking up on central themes and ideas so I'm pleased even up to today I'm still because I wasn't at that particular presentation still taking those things in and looking forward to testing both of these really quickly this summer it's great to be in Las Vegas um, <laughs> Again, I want to say, do tip your waitresses. They work hard. <laughs> Y'all been a little stingy. Um, I've already used a couple of active learning techniques. I teach in the summer. Lucky me. <laughs> Three hours of English, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And I did a little card thing in the Bobby last night, and they got really excited until they had to actually analyze an essay. And, um, and then I did the pause connection. It was interesting, because you know what I found out? <laughs> at all <laughs> at all so once they knew I was doing that they actually started listening so it actually has worked so far yeah, yeah. yeah come on over hun come on <laughs> yeah, you know. she's going I thought you were going to go no 
Yes. No, he needs to talk. I mean, <laughs> having given a presentation recently, I think um, you guys know that when you hand me a mic, he sings. These little town blues. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So I teach photo history, and uh, one of the things that's important to get out of that class is visual literacy and the ability to analyze images. And I, in the past, I have told them to analyze an image. That didn't work out too well. Uh, then I uh, modeled the behavior in, at, uh, in class, and then um, I had the students, uh, I, I showed a picture and we talked about it and I asked questions. And then they found out that they didn't get a grade for it, so that a lot of them just sat in the classroom. So what I'm going to do is I learned about jigsaw and uh, grouping, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to print up uh, four different pictures. I'm going to cut them in strips of three, and I'm going to say, take this, you know, those who uh, you, you got to you got to uh, distribute them, and then you got to put the picture together. That'll be the home group, and then you can say, well, take the left panel. That'll be the subgroups, or the middle panel, that'll be another subgroup, so on and so forth. So I have um, about 37 slide lectures uh, for, during the photo history uh, semester. So I'm throwing them all away and only doing active learning. Is that, that's a right thing to do? <laughs> I'm gonna just start all over, right? So some of the things, I like the, the two truths and the lie. I like the plinkers. I like uh, note sharing, because getting people to take notes is so important. So I've learned so much this week. I just, I can't believe it all. I want to thank you all. Oh. Um, <laughs> So um, we took this uh, active learning very seriously, so we decided to create um, something based on one of the concurrent sessions that we went to on Wednesday, presented by uh, Catherine Harper and Patty Collier. Wave your, wave your hands, people. <laughs> they had a great session on student drivers, not as scary as you might think. Um, and so basically it was having the students do collaborative learning projects and learning activities together. And one of the things that they um, uh, showed was doing some vid student videos. So we have a student video to show you. All right. I it's loading slow. It's loading. See, I use Mac, so you know. Uh, you want to sing a song for us? Yeah. Uh, sure. Tap band. Oh, Laura. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was not singing. Thank you. Uh, Join the Navy to see the world and what we see. We saw the sea, we saw the ocean and the Pacific, but the Pacific wasn't terrific and the Atlantic isn't. We're just cracked up the B. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is the pirate's favorite letter? R. Everybody thinks it's the R, but it's the C. Oh. <laughs>
things. E I E I O. Ooh. <laughs> e is for enjoyable. We learn new ways to integrate active teaching within the traditional lecture format, like. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Pause procedure to give instant feedback and increase student information retention and participation. Mary and Julia had a team. E I E I O. Woo! And on that team we learned some things. E I E I O. Woo! I is for inspiration. I'll be using VoiceGrid in my online class to inspire students to exchange ideas and discuss class topics. Sure, um, semesters. No so, 
What? <laughs> exactly. But I totally respect that some of you may not want to have your images broadcast in places, so shoot me an email at FCTL. I know who you are. And if you don't want your pictures used, I can make sure that we don't use those. Okay? So, and I should have asked ahead of time, but I was just... There were one or two things that were going on. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, we can so put the same. That's fine. All right. So, if you have questions or concerns, please come and talk to me or shoot me an email at FCTL. Enjoy something. And then we'll go around. So, uh, lunch at 11.45, but also at 11.45, the last plenary, yes. which is Renison, Meredith, and myself. So, you don't want to miss it. No. Don't miss it. Be a sign-in sheet um, out there. I'll learn.